everyone, and welcome to another episode of Chapter One Read Alouds. Today, I am going to be sharing with you yet another book that will be featured in the upcoming virtual book fair this May. Again, more information will go out very shortly, but this book today is a YA book, a young adult book. So just all week, I've been doing middle grade books, so that could appeal to anybody in grades five through eight, but today I'm focusing on young adults. So the young adult book that I'm going to read for you today, the chapter one of it, is The Night of Your Life by Lydia Sharp. Here's a summary. JJ is having the worst prom ever over and over again. All year, JJ's been looking forward to going to prom with her best friend, Lucy. It will be their last hurrah before graduation, a perfect night for all their friends to relax, have fun together, and celebrate making it through high school. But nothing goes according to plan. When a near car crash derails JJ before she even gets to prom and Lucy can't figure out what happened to him, things spiral out of control. The best night of their lives quickly turns into the worst. That is, until JJ wakes up the next day only to find that it's prom night all over again. At first, JJ thinks he's lucky to have unlimited chances at perfecting the night of his life, but each day ends badly for him and Lucy, no matter what he does. Can he find a way to get the perfect prom he's always wanted and move forward into the rest of his life? So a little bit of a thriller mystery, but there is a little bit of romance in there too. So here is chapter one of The Night of Your Life. The Night of the Broken Moon. That's the title of the chapter. Lucy is doing that thing with her, hip, her lips again. I call it a twibble, a twitch too subtle to be a quiver or a tremble. She's trying not to let this get to her. She's failing to hide that she's trying not to let this get to her. I haven't figured out what this is yet. So I lean against the doorway to her bedroom as Lucy finishes getting ready for school, pulling up sections of her hair to pin them back. If we talk, eventually the reason for her twibble will come out. Did you get your prom dress yet? Prom is tomorrow night, JJ, she says, without looking away from the mirror above her dresser. She plucks another pin from the tray next to a bottle of lotion. If I didn't have my dress yet, I wouldn't be going. She also wouldn't be Lucy if she didn't plan every little thing 10 steps ahead. But for this, I'm in agreement. This is senior prom, our last big hurrah before high school graduation, before our entwined lives go their separate ways. I picked up my tux last week, but she never told me when she got her dress. She hasn't told me anything about it, actually, not even the color. Can I see it? I take one step toward her closet. In a blink, she's across the room and blocking me. No! All right, all right, I say through a laugh. I won't look. I keep smiling. It's not a big deal. But still, what's the big deal? Prom is supposed to be a night of fun. Nothing more, nothing serious. We made a promise to each other at the beginning of senior year that if neither of us had dates for prom, we'd go with each other. At the time, I hadn't thought that would actually happen. It was likely I'd still be single, but before this past school year, Lucy never went long between partners. But now it's the day before prom and we're both still dateless. The chances of that changing in the next 36 hours are close to nil. It's not a big deal, she insists. And why can't I see it? I'm just curious. Your, curio your curiosity can hold out one more day. Her lips twibble again. Okay, is this about the dress? Does it fit okay? I ask. She goes back into the mirror to finish her hair. Her green, purple, blue swirled tunic top swishing back and forth. I didn't get too fat for it since picking it up, if that's what you mean. That's not what I mean. And you're not too fat for anything, now or ever. I mean, I know it's hard for you to find clothes that complement your shape, and I want you to be comfortable. Her dark brown gaze catches mine through the mirror, and then another twibble. Sorry, my brother is just getting to me lately. He's on some new fitness plan, and according to his chart, I'm morbidly obese and one cupcake away from heart failure. She rolls her eyes, then mutters, I've got a chart of my own I'd like to show him. This again. God, I hate that guy. You can out yoga him with both hands tied behind your back. Don't listen to him. Trying not to, her shoulders drop to the side. Anyway, I've got everything sorted out. Shoes, accessories, hair, makeup, and the dress fits perfectly. Good. It is good. She smiles unconvincingly, the corners of her mouth barely lifting. Even in the weak lightning, lighting of her bedroom, I notice her skin is already getting darker with the longer, sunnier days. She drinks in sunlight as if it's water, and she completely dehydrated over the cold months. In midwinter, Lucy appears almost as white as I am, but by midsummer, she turns a radiant golden brown, while I become a very attractive shade of burnt and peeling. She stabs the nest of dark auburn curls on her head with another pin, and we've got enough to worry about today, she continues, 
then sucks in her breath, the rest of her freezing in place. Did you remember to bring Marty? He's in my car, I assure her. Everything's ready to go, except you. Most school days, I find Lucy and a to-go cup of coffee waiting for me in the kitchen downstairs. It's only on the twibble days that I have to venture up to her room because she needs more time. Is she nervous about our presentation with Marty today? Is that what this is all about? Yesterday, she was fine. Today, she's on the brink of not fine, but we've been practicing. It's flawless. Everything's set down to the pauses for breath because Lucy is flawless, perfect as always. And so is all she does. I'm the one who's likely going to flub something up. Oh, uh, maybe that's it. It's me. I have a tendency to stress her out sometimes. Okay, more than sometimes, but never on purpose. She's a perfectionist and I'm whatever is the opposite of that. A uh, disorganizationalist, uh, go with the flowist, a uh, hot messist. So we clash. We have spats and then we get over it. That's just us. Complicated, but it works. We are a well-oiled machine of broken parts. Without Lucy to keep me in order, I'd probably fall apart. So spontaneously self-destruct. I don't remember how I kept it together before I met her almost four years ago. I'm ready now, she declares, and grabs her messenger bag, then slings it over her head to crisscross over her chest. I turn to walk out, and she falls into step behind me as we head downstairs. There's a spot on your glasses, she says casually, left lens, upper right corner, I remove them, use the bottom of my shirt to wipe away the offending spot, and slip them back on. Anything else? We reach the bottom of the stairs, and she looks me up and down. Her assessment pauses at my distance raptor over time, raptor equals velociraptor t-shirt. Twibble. Good choice. That's one of my favorites. I know, that's why I wore it. Glad you approve. You appear ready, she says, but if you're not feeling ready, tell me now. We have only one shot at this, one chance to nail this thing that counts for half our final physics grade. One chance. You don't have to remind me there are no second chances with this project or anything. Everything's going to be fine. We've got this, okay? What do you got? Her dad shouts from the kitchen. Unless it's a cold, you better share. He laughs, throaty and robust at his own joke. The sound of it tugs the grin out of me, even though I've heard that joke from him a million times. Yeah, I hate her brother, but I love her dad. Lucy sighs, heading across her living room. Nothing, papa, just school stuff, adopo. She waves goodbye to him as she passes the kitchen on her way to the front door. Ciao, Lucia, he calls back to her. JJ, don't forget your coffee. Va bene, my Italian is borderline embarrassing with my blah Ohio accident. accent, but every word I know of it, I learned from Lucy and her family. When I'm around them, it just comes out. She glances over her shoulder to me. Grab your coffee, let's go, we're running late. We're running right on time. I meant we will be running late if we don't leave now. She snatches her rainbow striped umbrella from the front closet and then she's out the door into the grim haze of a steady spring drizzle. My mistake, I grabbed the to-go cup of coffee she left for me on the kitchen counter. Say hello and goodbye to Signor Bellini, conveniently the same word for Italian, in Italian for both, and meet Lucy in my car. Same as I always do, every school day of the year. But today feels different, even with the routine, because today is the day before the day I've been looking forward to since the start of freshman year. Tomorrow is our senior prom, so today, nothing can go wrong. Ah, a little bit of foreshadowing for you. Nothing can go wrong, so clearly something may go wrong. So that is the end of chapter one. Of course, if you would like to read the whole book, buy it from the virtual book fair, which you'll find out more about soon. So see you next time on another episode of Chapter One Read Aloud.